السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To proceed, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, recently, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and to be honest, this happens all the time, a few movies got released. And everybody got excited about these movies, even the Muslims, particularly the youth, but really everyone. And they wanted to watch them, and they went out to watch them, and they gathered together to watch them. And what really saddens us about such a thing is the fact that when such a thing happens, there's no distinction that's left between a Muslim and a non-Muslim. A Muslim isn't supposed to get excited or happy or sad or angry for the same reasons a non-Muslim gets sad, happy, angry or excited. He doesn't spend his time the same way the non-Muslim spends his time. Why? How can a person who has recognized Allah and his Lordship, that he's the one who created him and he sustains him and sustains and created the heavens and the earth, and he recognizes the messengerhood of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he believes in everything that the messenger came with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like Jannah and all of its delights like the Nar and all of its punishments and like Yawm al Qiyamah that day that everyone is heading towards where the people they will be held to account for that which they did and that which they said if someone believes in all of these things 
<laughs> is it possible or is it suitable and befitting that he behaves and he spends his time like those people that don't um, believe in those in in those things? The answer is no, of course not. And the reason for that is because of his deen. So it is upon the Muslims that they turn away from such entertainment that isn't permissible in the first place and rather they turn to the deen of Islam. And know this, many of the, of the people they think that if they were to do that then they are missing out a huge deal. In reality they have not missed out on anything except loss. And in reality it is the non-Muslims. And those people who turn away from Islam, that are the real people who miss out, that are the real losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this great deen. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. This day I have perfected your religion for you. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my favor upon you. Wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. And I have become pleased. As Islam for you as a way of life, as a deen, as a religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that he is the one, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, which has um, completed or perfected this religion for you. It's a perfect religion and it's a complete religion and it is the only religion and only way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is pleased with. And there are many angles and there are many ways in which these movies are corruptors, forms of corruption, and they corrupt those who watch them. And from the greatest of them is the fact that these things show the opposite gender. And it's haram for the Muslim man to look upon a woman. And it's haram for the woman to look upon a man with desire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses the Muslim men first in the Qur'an when he says, Tell the believing men to lower their gaze, to reduce their vision, to avert their gaze and their sight from those things it's prohibited from them to look at. And tell them to preserve and guard over their private parts. That is purifying for them. Inna Allah khabirun bima yasna'oon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Muslim men to reduce their vision and lower their gaze. Does the ruling change when you're looking at the woman through a screen or in the cinema or in a movie? No, the ruling doesn't change. Because the harmful effects of looking upon a woman in real life is the same as the harmful effects of looking at a woman behind through a screen or through a monitor or through a movie that is watched and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that the private parts be guarded and that you don't fall into sin and you don't lose your chastity and you don't lose your purity by looking at that which is haram because the first thing that happens is is the look and the ulama they describe the look as a poisonous arrow so that when a shab a young man he looks at something and he is desirous over it, that's like a poison arrow that entered in through his eyes until it settled in his heart. And many of the youth, starting from movies, they ended up looking at things that were even worse than movies on their mobile phones, in homes, when they thought no one could see them except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was watching over them. And from there, they became addicted to the most filthiest things. <clears throat> and from there, they lost their focus, they lost their intellects, they lost their deen. So then what re remains of this youth? It is as if this youth is alive in his body and dead in his heart because of what he laid his eyes upon, starting firstly with these movies. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he addresses the Muslim women. He says, وَقُلِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And say to the believing women, that they have to reduce their gaze and avert their gaze and not look at those things that is prohibited for them to look at. That the believing women, they also have to be careful in regards to what they make apparent of their beauty. And the whole of the, 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 the woman is a beauty. 
that man is attracted to. So she has to cover herself. And she has to wear a Sharia compliant hijab. Not the hijab that some of the sisters wear. That is even more like a beautification. So she puts on makeup and then she'll pick a beautified hijab and she'll put it on a way that makes her look beautiful or makes uh, her features look even more beautiful. And she goes out like that. That could even be a form of mockery. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated the hijab to save the people from corruption and this one puts on the hijab to cause corruption and to cause fitna and to beautify herself or to go out wearing jewelry or to go out wearing perfume or to speak to, the, to, to men in that soft tone that is attracted to, uh, attractive for man <clears throat> and man he's attracted by the senses more than women the harmful effect of a man looking up, up upon a woman that is haram for him is far more greater than the harmful effects of a woman looking at a man. Perhaps this is why Allah addresses the men first. Lower your gaze. Avert your vision in the first place. But the Muslim woman has to do her part. She doesn't fall for the trickery of the wolves that want to remove her religion from her. They say, how can you listen to a man? Don't let a man tell you what to do. Okay, don't listen to a man. But will you listen to Rabbul Alameen? The one who created you and your father and your mother. Would you not listen to him? When he tells you to cover yourself and not to make your adornment apparent, illa, illa ma zahara minha, except that which is um, apparent from the meaning the outer garment. That garment that you use to cover yourself and to hide your beauty, obviously, that is the thing that is going to be apparent to the people, and it's no problem if that is seen, of course. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, back to what we we're talking about the topic of movies, we now ask the question. The women that come in these movies, are they wearing the hijab? Are they wearing the Sharia compliant hijab that you think it may be possible for you to look upon them? And then, uh, uh, do they not come in the most beautified forms? How about these, how about the scenes of nudity that is within these movies? And even the stories of romance and corruption and facade that taints the thinking of the Muslim youth and the thinking of the Muslim woman. That, that he or she thinks that his life is not complete until in high school he gets a girlfriend because that's all he's been watching on TV and on movies. So my brothers and sister, sisters in Islam, stay away from these movies that corrupt you. And you know what's the worst effect, my brothers and sisters in Islam, of these movies? A person who constantly watches these movies or listens to the music within them or music outside of them by listening to albums or, or YouTube videos of music, the sweetness of looking at the halal and good things is removed from him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So he comes to the salah, he gets nothing from the salah except it's as if he's just doing some motion, he's just doing the ruku. But he hasn't actually done ruku, the meaning of ruku and sujood. He's in sujood but his heart is not humble towards Allah. So what's the point of that sujood then? He's in his qiyam, in the standing portion of the salah. The imam is reciting about Jannah and Nar. He's thinking about the movie he just watched. He's thinking about the storyline. He's thinking about this hero. He's thinking about this villain. Why? Because that's all he does. How can you expect that his heart suddenly changed? Allah didn't put two hearts in your body. One for the movies and one for Islam. One heart. So you need to cultivate a bit on those things that are good. Or else that sweetness... That, you, that, that, that the Muslimun normally find in Salah, it will be removed. When this person, he looks inside the Qur'an, he doesn't find any sweetness in the recitation of the Qur'an. And this is, this is how, how people are punished because of their actions. You used your eyes to look at haram, you used your ears to listen to haram. Now when you listen to good stuff and pure stuff, you don't benefit from it. And that's if they make it to the Salah in the first place. From the calamities, he's a person, he's watching a movie, the time of Salah comes, he doesn't get up from his place, he's too invested into the movie. Even though he could, if he wanted to, he could pause it. But he's so engrossed in this movie, he would miss the Salah. The Mu'addin says, Hayya ala salah come to the prayer, Hayya ala al-falah, come to success. He says, no, I need to watch this movie, I have to finish this movie. He doesn't actually say it, but this is technically what he's saying with his actions. Subhanallah. Or the sister at home, because the brother is obligated to go to the masjid. But the sister, she has to, it's better for her to pray her obligatory prayer at home, but she shouldn't be prevented from the masjid if she goes. 
she would she just has to get up and pray but she wouldn't do because she's too engrossed in these movies and more than that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says about the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is within it ahsan al-qasas the best of stories are actually inside the Quran the stories of Musa alayhi salam the story of Isa alayhi salam Yusuf alayhi salam Dawood and his son Suleiman alayhi salam when they read these stories does it have any impact on them do they benefit from it does it inspire them no it doesn't why because they're too used to the storylines in the movies their hearts have been corrupted and deviated when they learn about something that's beneficial and pure it has very little effect on them subhanallah so we take we seek refuge in allah from becoming like this as for the noble people as for the righteous people as for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi sallam then these people they find joy in the salah and they find joy in the Quran such that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would say to his noble companion Bilal radiallahu an the muaddin of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi sallam what a noble title a noble companion he would say to him sallallahu alayhi sallam he would say Qum ya Bilal stand O Bilal fa'arihna bis salah and give us comfort Give us that peace, that moment of happiness, so that you give adhan and then we pray salah and you find comfort in it. But the people of movies and of cinema and music, then they don't find such comfort. Another thing that I want to address my brothers and sisters in Islam is so-called Islamic series. So-called is Islamic historical series or Islamic movies. Firstly, it's not permissible to call them Islam. Islamic means they are from Islam and it means that from the Quran and the Sunnah where in the Quran and the Sunnah in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam obviously they didn't have the technology for films or movies but they had the ability to do plays and things of that nature where did they ever do such a thing? Audhu Billah They never did it When did the Salaf ever do it? When did the noble A'imma of this Ummah Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah Imam Malik Rahimahullah Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, when did they do ever anything like this? So where did you get this term Islamic movie and Islamic series? And how many of them are even actually correct? In fact, they just dramatize everything to captivate the audience. It's not, a lot of it isn't even historically correct. And those people who say, fine, it's not Islamic, but it's good. We ask them, okay, if it's good, do women appear in these movies? Do young women appear in these movies? Are they not adorned? Are they not dressed with things which is not the correct hijab in Islam? Is there music in these series, in these movies? So how can you say that these things are good then? My brothers and sisters in Islam, you want to progress, you want something Islamic? Go to the Quran and the Sunnah. Go and listen to a lecture, go and seek knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then purify you and elevate your level, my brothers and my sisters. And truly, those people who get excited when a new movie is released, they're watching a new movie, they're going to see new movies from their friends. The first place which they have to rectify is their hearts. But it's, it, because it's only a corrupt heart that needs movies to be happy. Or to pass their days and their days pass like that. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudra. Verily within the body there is a lump of flesh. Ida salahat salah al jasadu kulluh. If it is sound, then the rest of the body is sound. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ And if it is corrupt, then the rest of the body is corrupt. أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Indeed, verily, it is the heart. So if you see yourself, you're inclined to these movies. My brothers and sisters, we don't be arrogant about it. But we take the advice from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and we say to ourselves, Okay, maybe I have this problem. I'm going to start with trying to rectify my heart. How do you rectify your heart? To the remembrance of Allah. And the remembrance of Allah has been legislated in many ways. The best and the most noble of them is the salah for the men in the masjid and for the women at home or in the masjid. It's better than more reward at home for them. And this is how you're going to purify your heart. But if you turn away and if you are arrogant and you just want to be like the rest of the people with these movies and these show and these musics and these festivals and all of these things, then your heart will die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a stern warning in the Quran. When he says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَعْمًا 
Then as for that person who turns away from my remembrance, then we will give him a depressed life. Turned away from Salah, turned away from Quran, and then we become surprised at why the depression levels of the people is so high. The amount of people wanting to commit suicide is so high. Do they not watch movies? They watch movies. Do they get any happiness? Maybe for that one second they're watching the movie. Afterwards, the, heart, the sadness returns to their heart. Afterwards, the movie can't save them in their beds at night. As for the Muslim, he's upon the remembrance of Allah. When he sleeps, he says the sleeping dua. It brings him so much joy that a thousand movies couldn't bring. Just the sleeping dua. Allahumma bismika mutu wa ahiyya. Allah, by your name, do I die and do I live? That, those, saying those words for the people of Iman, more pleasure and more joy than the whole of the film industry and cinema could ever provide for any person. Why? He's a person of Iman. And happiness comes from Allah. And Allah is the one who created your heart to uh, find happiness in His remembrance in the first place. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, turn to the Quran and the Sunnah and turn towards knowledge and turn away from these things that distract you from your path towards Jannah. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم My brothers and sisters in Islam, we spent the first portion of the khutbah talking about the corruption and the evils of these movies and series and things of that nature and any form of haram entertainment. To be honest, we could have mentioned a lot more, but we suffice with what we have, have said. But I, I have a question now. Who is that person? that wouldn't watch movies in the first place and doesn't need to be warned against watching movies. In fact, they will have no desire, that man and that woman. Who is it? It is a person of high ambition and of lofty goals. A person who looks at the condition of the Muslim Ummah and sees how they are being oppressed and sees how they are weak and he sets himself a target and a goal. I will set out in my life to rectify this situation. I will strive to be an alim, a scholar. I will strive to be a talib al -ilm. I will try, strive to be someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. I will strive to have a position in Jannatul Firdaus, the best portion of Jannah, the highest middle portion of Jannah. This person, it hurts him. He can't sit down and watch five people acting a little movie. He can't sit down for five minutes and watch a movie Why he's thinking to, my, to himself, Subhanallah, how on earth can I sit and watch this for an hour? It's just actors acting a movie. It's just a man like me who came together and pretended to be some sort of superhero or whatever the movie is. And I'm going to sit here, I'm going to watch this. When I could be progressing towards Jannah, when I could be rectifying the situation of the Ummah, when I can learn an ayah, when I can learn a hadith, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This person, you don't have to warn him against movies. He won't be able to sit and watch it. It's not possible for him. He'll get anxious, he'll get upset. He's like, I can't do this. How can I waste my time like this? <coughs> so my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is how the companions are, the Allah and those with them, they didn't turn to any form of entertainment. They didn't have time for it. Their hearts couldn't bear that. Their hearts were pure hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and keep us firm on, upon the religion. Like the likes of the cousin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he was a young man, perhaps about 13 years of age. And he saw how the people were gathering around Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu at the khilaf of Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the leader of the Muslims. And they were seeking knowledge from them. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, as a young man, he said to himself, I'm going to seek knowledge. And he advised his companion with him to seek knowledge. But this companion said to him, When the people have Abu Bakr and Umar, you want them to 
to seek knowledge from you. What's the point of you seeking knowledge? We have Abu Bakr and Umar. But guess what happened? As time went by, Abdullah ibn Abbas didn't listen to this man. He was firm. And this is rare because most of the time, people get affected by their friends. That's why you need to have good friends. But Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anh, know the level. So he stayed firm, he had istiqama, and he sought knowledge. Then the day came when that man saw the people gathered around Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anh, seeking knowledge from him. And this man said, subhanallah, this boy, because he was young, was more intelligent than me, more smarter than me, that he used his time efficiently seeking knowledge, and now the people are benefiting from him. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, didn't want to be known, he didn't want to be a celebrity. Like these celebrity du'at, all they want is views and clicks and likes. He didn't care about any of this. He wanted to benefit. And with that sincere intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a noble companion in the first place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him even more by making him from the most from amongst the most knowledgeable of the companions, radiallahu anhum. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, I advise you, seek Islamic knowledge. Seek the knowledge of Mutun Almiya, little books of knowledge that you learn with a teacher. And Alhamdulillah, I'm very pleased to say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that you now have a teacher amongst yourselves, your Imam, and other than them, that he may bring or arrange for you, that you can seek knowledge. One of the books he's going through with you, or maybe he's assigned someone to Hafatul Atfal that you learn about how to recite the Qur'an properly and the rules of Tajweed and also he's teaching a book Ta'zeem Al-Ilm which teaches you about the etiquette of seeking knowledge make sure it's your priority that you get involved in these lessons what is it? once a week? we go to school, we go to university we learn so many things about secular life and about the dunya we can't spend an hour or an hour and a half once in the masjid in the whole week just to learn about our deen are we satisfied that our level of knowledge is the same as level of knowledge as a non-muslim about the deen the non-muslim knows that the prophet muhammad was called muhammad hatta even though the day when i uh, there was a dispute between a muslim man and a non-muslim man so i went to stop them fighting they gave their stories and the non-muslim guy turns around and says wallahi he's lying he said wallahi he's lying so can we be satisfied that the amount of knowledge we have isn't much different from the non-Muslim. How can we be satisfied with that? So learn your deen and attend these lessons so that you may be someone who is beneficial to your own self and beneficial to the rest of the people, my brothers and sisters in Islam. You can choose the entertainment, you can choose the corruption, which is the movies and the filth and the TV shows and the music. It will only lead to your own downfall or you can choose to live a pure life Seeking knowledge, looking inside the Quran, frequent, frequenting the Masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only honor you and elevate you. And in the end, you will see those people who seek knowledge and those people who turn to entertainment, their level in the end, it becomes so clear, subhanAllah. Um, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq in this regard and to protect us and our youth from the evils of these movies. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين